Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just continued our series on the life of David. And today we talked about David and Bathsheba. Um, and so we've been looking through this series at the life of David, and we've seen uh, some victorious moments mm -hmm. in David's life. But today we focused on one of David's struggles. Uh, looking at uh, his struggle with sexual sin and temptation. Um, and whether our struggle is sexual sin or some other temptation, we all have them. Sure. And they, everybody. Everybody. And in the life of a believer, it's something that we have to flee from and, yeah. and work through on a daily basis. Let's talk a little bit more about temptation. Yeah. You had some good insights on yeah, that. Yeah, that I didn't have time to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I would give credit to whatever book I was reading, but I can't remember. It was over the summer break, and I, I, I came upon a portion that I thought was really interesting, and that is the author said, if you distill your temptation down, it is a variation of one of, or both, the two questions that the serpent, the enemy in the Garden of Eden, asked to Eve and Adam. Hmm. Um, one, did God really say, that's where it all started, hmm in the Garden of Eden, did God really say that you can't have? And then the second one, do you think that you really would die? Or in other words, you don't really, really think. think the consequences mm -hmm. would be that bad. And it creates doubt. And once you start <laughs> tangling and uh, yeah. rationalizing <laughs> starts and you can begin to think to yourself, well, God did say it, but surely he probably didn't mean it for me. I mean, that's probably what David, mm -hmm. I mean, David knew God's word. He, he would help to write the Psalms and give us, you know, so he knew God. But in that moment, mm -hmm. obviously he was living a compartmentalized life, sort of like the professor that I talked about at the end of Dan's and mine, who somehow was living this divided life mm -hmm. and had decided he might have said it, but he didn't mean it for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And the consequences won't be surely that bad mm -hmm. for me. It's what happens to us all if we're not careful. Yeah. So one way, so we flee temptation, but then we also fight against it in a way of protecting ourselves Absolutely. from it in accountability groups. Yeah. That's one yeah. way that we flee is, yeah. is yeah. by sure. having people that speak into this and That's hold us right. accountable. So tell me uh, about how you've seen accountability groups sure. work well. Well, I think one of the, the best tools I've ever seen goes back to the 1700s. One of my heroes, John Wesley, um, who was a sort of an exacting kind of person and very disciplined, but he wrote out five questions that he would have his uh, people get into clusters, same gender of maybe two or three people, what we would call an accountability group, what he called, what they called back in the 1700s, a band, B-A-N-D. Mm -hmm. And the band, and you can Google it, the, the Wesley's band questions. Um, and I can't recall them all by, by memory, but I can get the gist of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, um, uh, where have you been tempted since we last met a week ago. Um, secondly, were you uh, victorious over that temptation? If so, how were you? If, if not, uh, why were you not? Mm -hmm. And that leads to the third one. So where have you sinned since we last uh, met together? Uh, and uh, one or two others, and then he ended it with, have you been entirely honest with us? Mm. And I think right there, if you need a little template just to go through while you're having coffee or eating breakfast or lunch, you know, whatever, um, those are some pretty good mm -hmm. questions to use today. Because just getting together mm -hmm. doesn't guarantee that your soul is going to be protected. I'll share an example that actually comes from Pastor Dan. I remember years ago, um, he was in a little group like this with some other pastors back when he was pastoring in Georgia. And 
one week, one of the pastors didn't show up. And they thought, well, he must just not be feeling well. And, and they didn't think much about it. And the next week he did. And they start going after him. You know, where are you? We've missed you. What's going on? Well, soon thereafter, he's out of the ministry. Hmm. And what in the world? He'd gotten himself embroiled in an affair. And he was still, previously, up to those two weeks, he'd been meeting with these guys. He just wasn't being honest. Mm -hmm. He wasn't answering that last question that Wesley yeah. said, Are have you, you been you? honest completely here uh, with us? Are you still hanging on to something inside your soul? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are there any, uh, we know accountability groups work well, mm -hmm. having people who speak into your mm -hmm. life. Um, are there any other resources um, out there or things that you sure. would? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, but are there, there any? There are a lot. I, I uh, would mention a couple with credit to our own Mike DeStefano. I was texting with him to make sure I was up to date, I said, so Mike, what is particularly helpful these days? And he said, I would recommend, uh, the, if, if you're in some sort of addiction, particularly of this nature, uh, the Fortify program, the Fortify app, um, it's a recovery program. And then for parents, uh, there's an app called Our Pact. Okay. And we're gonna be, installing that uh, with our kids, mm -hmm. uh, our pact, which is a parental mm -hmm. control protection uh, sort of thing, just to, just to help out. You know, we talked about today um, the Kairos conference yeah. that's coming up um, as somewhere that you have just struggled with before. Like we see that David, who struggled with this so much, but he repented and he received, even though he had consequences, yeah. received forgiveness just, just in the same way we do if we that's struggle. Right. And so Kairos could be a Oh, great, that's another great step. Uh, a Don't great place miss, to step. that's or a moment. we offer counseling and partner resources yeah. here. So that's right. uh, certainly don't fight this kind of thing alone. Sure, make a call to the church. Mm -hmm. Ask for Beth Ellis, Beth mm -hmm. Ellis mm -hmm. is a good place to start. Mm -hmm. And she can connect you to groups and things in our area and as well. counselors, experts. All right. Good. So that was a great look again today at uh, David. We continue talking about David next week. So looking forward to that. Hope you'll join us back here next week as well for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.